Okay, everybody, what's up? It's me, John D. Villarreal, and you are listening to the John D. Villarreal Radio Show on 1210 AM Miami, The Man, the only station where you are the man. Super, super show today, so much to talk about. I am joined by a special guest right now. We're gonna bring him in in a second. I think I have another guest, an actual person who has immigrated, well, obviously the actual person, but someone who has recently come over here to study from Syria. So much to talk about, about what's going on with Syria and all that. It's been a huge, huge week. I mean, I don't even know where to start. We're gonna talk about impeachment quick updates, the China trade deal, the China uh, NBA issue, news, all that type of stuff. Obviously, U.S. troops pulling out of Syria, but I'm also joined by this really, really smart professor. We'll tee him up in one second. We're going to talk about AI, the future of elite education. We also might talk about now Elizabeth Warren. Senator Warren is leading the Democratic presidential primary. That is incredible. There's so much going on with that whole situation. How does that change the dynamic? What happens now? Now she's also being attacked by the left by Bernie Sanders. I also want to talk about Trump rallies and protests in Wisconsin. That's wild. That was, I mean, huge rally. But then what was going on in the streets out there? And then, you know, this dude's really smart who's with me. I mean, he, he's into all kinds of crazy stuff. I might want because of, you know, AI, technology, NASA stuff, all kinds of crazy stuff. And I want to know, like, we may touch on them in the second hour, like, hey, are we actually going to live on other planets? And what are the chances of that? What does that look like? Some people have come out and said, I think one scientist recently said, there's no way that's never going to happen. But I think it's going to happen. And then if we go out there, at what point, I mean, is there any possibility of alien life? We're seeing all kinds of different things going back and forth. That's a huge topic. That's a huge show. And we may touch on it a little bit. FinTech, global markets, so much more. This, I mean, that's my setup. I guarantee you this show is going to go in many, many different directions. And that's cool and that's okay. If you want to join the program, just write this number down because I'm telling you there's going to be something you want to call in on. 786-633-5927. 786-633-5927. But I want to tee up my special guest right now. Professor Jim Liu, he is an associate professor at the Johns Hopkins Carey Business School. Just got a promotion. This dude's into AI, tech, everything. He's been in the hedge fund world. He's got PhD, he's got all of it. So Jim, welcome to the program. Hey John, thank you uh, very much. It's an honor to be here. Looking forward to a wonderful show today with you, and it looks like you're gonna cover a lot of ground today, so let's get started. Oh my gosh, you're way too, you're way too calm and way too smart. Uh, this is gonna get, this show's gonna get a little bit crazy, but it's also gonna be a little bit smart. So we're gonna do a little bit about all of it. Let me tee this up a little bit, and you can weigh in or, or not weigh in wherever you like, no pressure, it's fine. Just pop on in here. I have to talk about impeachment. Last week I went wall to wall on impeachment and what was going on, the Biden thing, the Ukraine thing, all these, you know, it's so weird because we live right here very close to DC. And, you know, I, I want to be very careful what I'm saying right here. We know a lot of people who are jacked into that system and have a lot of, I don't know, power, if you will, honestly. And it's just, you know, I get it because we're, this is the biggest economy in the world, the most powerful city in the world, all of that, it all makes sense. But when you look around DC, it's so expensive. There's so much money flowing around. And these are government people that are making 80, 100, 120. But surprise, surprise, in some cases, in some instances, and we're not gonna name names necessarily, and as I'm not saying anyone we know anything like that, I'm just saying we, we're looking at it, we, we, you get a vibe when you go down to you know the war or wherever like that. And dude, their families are rich. Their buddies are rich. I mean, there's just a lot of money flowing around. And, and a lot of people say this is a very swampy city. There's a lot of pay for play. You have someone like Donald Trump who came in here. Whether you like him or not, he has disrupted the system. And there's people that were, frankly, very invested in that system. And now it's like, and I think Limbaugh touched on this in his show, it's like if you spent your whole life investing in and lobbying and, and spending money and you're having these relationships and all of a sudden like the, the chessboard has been just basically demolished, you're not too happy about that. And I think we've seen resistance from Trump or, or, or to Trump on both sides of the aisle. And when I talk to people, I'm again, I'm not gonna name names, I had a conversation recently with someone pretty jacked in on, uh, you know, I would say the, the, the Republican side and, 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll make your own inferences, whatever. I, w- I didn't sense, <laughs> I didn't sense the fandom on the Trump side. And I think that if you look, and again, just, just, uh, I'm not saying anything specifically or naming a specific name, but just to, to paint a picture, like a Carl Rove type, stuff like that. I mean, this is, you know, again, not Carl Rove specifically, but just how about, okay, let's get away from him. How about like the, the elite professional political class those dudes make a lot, men and women, make a lot of money on these campaigns. And now all of a sudden, like, Trump's basically done it on a shoestring with, uh, you know, I don't even know if you call it, I mean, and I'm not saying this disparagingly, I'm saying in the, in the mind of elite Washington, in the mind of establishment Washington, a minor league or a worse team, but yet you can't say that from a result standpoint, they just won the World Series, right? So I think that there's a lot of disruption on that part of it. Um, I'm just going to, we talked all, there's so much more to talk about. We I talked all show last time about it, but just as a quick update type of thing where I think it's at, I don't think it's going anywhere. This quote unquote whistleblower has been shown, I think, had the reports are that it's got connection to Biden and doesn't want to testify even in, even in private, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, my wife, they're getting the shot. That's okay. It doesn't matter. I love the way, I love the way, that's the other thing. My wife is, I mean, of all the weeks, of all the weeks, like she is a total, she's Israeli, she's a total expert, I mean, obviously living in, from Israel. Of all the weeks, it's like, I I try to have her talk about Israel, Jim. (laughs) I try to have her talk, I'd love to have her talk about Syria, just won't do it. it. It is what it is. And so, the point of it is, is this whistleblower will not testify doesn't want to testify even in private. I mean, this is all closer. I think it all falls apart. I don't think it's going to work. I think it's just not going anywhere. It's going to be a partisan thing. They may or may not impeach him. It's not going to go anywhere in the Senate. I, I think it's looking worse and worse for Biden. And now Elizabeth Warren, we're going to talk about that. It has taken the lead. And that's really crazy. But I want to, I want to get into all this stuff. There's this massive news about China. So I just want to footnote that because obviously I got to bring my, my audience up to speed. If you've been working all week, you've been doing stuff, been at the beach, whatever it is. I don't think, I think we can punt that to another week because I don't think much has happened there. I think that the whole thing's falling apart. I, it's like, it's good to see that the Republicans have sort of rallied around Trump. And it's not, again, it's not a, you know, red versus blue or anything like that. I just think that there is nothing to this impeachment thing. I think it's an absolute joke. I think they wanted to impeach him before he even got there. And again, like Trump, don't like Trump, whatever you want to do there. Just vote them out. There's an election next year. It's not a big deal. It's not a hard stuff. All right, but John, what, what are the issues right now? I think this is pretty interesting because, you know, of all the allegations thrown up against Trump, I mean, he's talked to the press about what he did, right? And so, you know, I mean, do you think they have a, you think it's a zero probability that they're going to be able to impeach him? Or do you think well, that this is the best case? No, 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 no. There's never zero probability. There's never <laughs> zero probability. Okay, okay, fine. You, okay, if you want in on this, I'm going to get you in on it. No, I, lo- no, I love it. No, I love it. I love it. It's fine. I mean, you know me. I'll talk about anything. But here's the deal. I think that, you know, you listen to, to Senator Ben Sass. Oh, there's so many Republicans that would vote for, you know, for impeachment if they could. Is that, that just shows you the resistance. But it's just not like that. We have an election year coming up. So the bottom line, Mitch McConnell, Senator Leader McConnell has said, it's not going anywhere. That thing is DOA. So I, I think there's a hope, there's a private, if you will, sort of you know, political fantasy on some never Trumpers or some establishment Republicans part, like if they can just get the polls and give me some cover and, I'll, and we'll vote for them and, and make this thing look bad. I mean, all of these wannabe scandals from, I mean, it's not even Kavanaugh, it's Kavanaugh, it's taxes, it's Cohen, it's Rudy Giuliani. I mean, it's, it's on to the next, on to the next, and it's, it's rush out. We got to do this thing, you know, pass it before we, we, we read the bill. All, it's that kind of mentality. People are tired of it. It's not going anywhere. Nancy Pelosi, they, they may, they may, they may vote. In the, I would say it's, it's more likely than not. Okay. That they're going, that the House will impeach him, but not by much. I mean, I think it's close. It, it, things falling apart pretty rapidly, but the Senate's not doing anything so, at all. So play this out for me. Talk so do you me. think this thing right now, the 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 outcome is Biden sort of loses his front runner role? Yeah, he's and done. That's pretty much it. And he's it's done. It's going to be a non-event going forward. And you think Elizabeth yeah. Warren's going to be the one that yes. is going to go forward? Yes. Yes. Or are, are we yes. too early on this? No, 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 no. That's exactly it. That's exactly where I think it's going to go. I think it's Elizabeth Warren. If you look at the real clear politics, they have something up right now in terms of the sort of, uh, you know, prediction stuff. And the predictions are that, you know, it's it's worn by, by more than half, right? And, and the next one would be Biden. I've said this for weeks and weeks and months. I did, a, a, you know, 
and you know me, I, I, I talk forever and I get into everything and stuff like that, but you have to follow the, you have to follow the trail. At the end of the trail, the whole piece comes together. It's like one of those things, right? And so I said weeks ago that if you want to be ahead of the game, you listen to the show. And the people who have listened to the show are way ahead of the game. And in this way, I have never, I thought Biden's best day was the day that, you know, right before, or right after he announced. And it was always going to be, it was, it's like Hillary Clinton V2. It's like, I'm inevitable, I'm the one, rally behind me. And there, and there was a better rationale for Biden. Where we are now with TV, with versus the digital, digital and tweeting, you have to be omnipresent. Trump has a direct relationship with his voters. He, he, he's tweeting all the time. You do not have that level of access, that level of volume from, from Clinton or Biden, whether that's an energy thing or whether that is a, um, a thing of the political handler saying, hey, we're going to monitor everything you're doing here. I think I read something about how Clinton had to do like, it was 12 hours to vet and, and put together one tweet. That's never going to work against Trump, number one. But number two, I think that like, it was this inevitability thing. What was what's the rationale for Biden other than hey he's gonna he's been there forever and people are comfortable with him. You know, B he's a little bit more so-called moderate. C he's a, uh, um, the extension of the Obama legacy, if you will. And D he can be the anti-Trump, if you will, and try to get voters in Scranton and Pennsylvania and stuff in some places that Democrats have always won recently, and now they've lost. Well, all, all of those things without getting too, because it's too deep, and I want to pull you back in this, all of those have been defeated, if you will, and, and sort of debunked, if you will. And he hasn't had an opportunity to really, really, you know, move anything forward that's new and fresh. And the same thing happened to Clinton. The other thing that has happened to Joe Biden, and, and specifically has been debunked, is he's been pulled so hard left that it's like, I mean, why would I vote? If Joe Biden's going to sound like, a Cory Booker or sound like a Buttigieg or sound like a Sanders or Warren, why would I vote for Biden instead of, why, why wouldn't okay. I vote for Warren? So, so here's a question to Talk John. To so suppose that Joe Biden's team hired you as a political mm -hmm. consultant, mm -hmm. as a strategist, right? Yep. And you're tasked to defeat Trump, right? Yep. How should he try to recover? Would, should he get on Twitter? Should, will this be a so, social media campaign? Um, you know, because I know Trump's going to be on Twitter, right? Yep. Should the Democratic sort of candidate also engage in that sort of platform? Or how would you, how would you set up the um, Biden team? And then the other thing is, you know, Bernie Sanders, right? He's mm -hmm. having some health issues, mm -hmm. but he has a lot of support. Where do you think the Bernie Sanders um, support is going to go? He's going to go to Warren? Oh, it's going to Warren. Warren. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That, that's, the, that's the easy part of the question. The first part of the question there is absolutely intriguing. And I'm glad you asked that because I didn't really think about that. I should have, right? And I, and I got to try to do this quickly before the break. So if I really do believe that, and, and again, this is, this is everything with the caveat because the week's a lifetime in politics. Everything can change. Everyone has a chance. There's nothing 100%. We know all of those things, right? And, and news and everything can overtake all of this. I think that Biden, even as damaged as he is, and as weak as he is, probably is the only Democrat uh, running right now that could be Trump. If I were, and this is going to sound very sort of, it's going to freak out the left and everything like that, but if I were Biden and his team, I would immediately get more visible on all of it. I think you have to be all over digital. I think you have to be all over TV. I think if he's going to make gas, so what? It doesn't matter. Authenticity trumps polish. To not to use a bad a, a pun there or anything like that. Authenticity trumps polish, number one. Number two, what he has to do is run hard to the middle. Forget all this stuff, dump all that stuff. Let, let everyone else do that. Let them split themselves up and all this you know, hard left stuff, whatever like that. He, just said, he, he needs to say this. This is Biden's argument. You know what? Trump's done a lot of great things. And I want to continue his success. I'll give him his due. That's fine. I want to do a lot of the same things with my own, like here's some policies on the left that they're going to like, whatever. But you know what? Trump's been very divisive. He's been very damaging to the politics as we know it. I've been in this town for 40 years. He's right. We do need to drain the swamp. He's right. We do need to do some stuff. But you also have to have people that, that know how to work in government that can play nice in the sandbox with other people, blah, blah, blah. There's some you know issues on here. Hey, maybe we made some mistakes in Ukraine, this and that, whatever. Do, do almost a... 
for lack of a better word, a, a quasi mea culpa, a sort of a quote unquote, you know, come to Jesus uh, type of discussion with the American people and just get out there, run to the center because at the end of the day, people want someone who's going to represent them. People know the economy is going well, uh, well, really, really well. And there's a lot of people that are going to, for lack of a better word, and I'm not saying this is me, quote unquote, hold their noses and vote for Trump because things are going well. Because you, you don't, you, if you elect, I mean, Wall Street was freaked, and you're a Wall Street guy, Wall Street was freaked out by Elizabeth Warren. And I think that that is something that needs to be addressed. We'll have to touch it real quick here. We'll hit it hard in the next segment. So that's what I would do if I were, okay. I mean, what do you so think of that? I, no, I agree with you. I think that on the Democratic side, Democratic side, you have to go towards the middle, right? There's so many more things to talk about. It's, uh, you're listening to John D. Villarreal Radio Show on 1210 AM Miami, The Man, the only station where you are the man. Be right back.